Russia has launched a counter-offensive in the Kursk region. Against this backdrop, talk has once again begun about the goals of the Ukrainian forces' daring invasion of the region. According to the Financial Times, the Kursk operation was the first major foreign incursion into Russian territory since World War II. The plan was always risky. The risks are growing and the strategic benefits are still unclear. Ukrainian forces achieved a tactical victory, capturing about 1,200 square kilometers of Russian territory after a surprise attack on August the 6th. The operation helped restore some faith in Ukraine's offensive capabilities, changing the narrative of the war. But so far, Ukraine has not succeeded in its goal of forcing Moscow to divert forces from the east. The overall success of the invasion will now depend on the losses Ukraine suffers in holding the territory, possibly for months, analysts say. And those losses will depend on the tactics Russian forces use to push back the Ukrainians. Rob Lee, a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute, said the outcome from Ukraine's perspective depends on the relative resources committed by each side. The important thing is not that Ukraine diverted resources. This is normal, as long as Russia diverts more, he said. If Russia had played the long game, devoting only limited resources to Kursk, it could have further stretched and destroyed Ukrainian forces. Russia launched a counter-offensive and said it had quickly recaptured about 63 square kilometers of territory from Ukrainian forces on the left flank of the Kyiv takeover. However, Deep State said Ukraine was still making progress in the north. President Volodymyr Zelensky said Friday that Russian troops had begun a rapid offensive but had made no significant gains. He also said Ukraine would use the seized Russian land as bargaining chips in any future peace talks, which could mean holding it indefinitely. The Ukrainians have also stopped bringing in new reserves. They have started moving less and instead digging in more, a source in Russian military circles told the FT. According to Lee, Ukraine has made new long-term commitments in its offensive on the Kursk region. Kyiv has created an extended front that will have to be continually supplied and reinforced, potentially to the detriment of its offensive lines in Ukraine. Ukrainian forces can use the cover of the forests to dig in, but that advantage will disappear in winter. Lee added, Ukraine's ability to rotate its units or send reinforcements is also limited. The country is still in the early stages of replenishing its troops after the introduction of new mobilization law. Officials say the mobilization is proceeding as planned, but it will take another three months before the newly trained troops can make an impact on the battlefield, said Alexander Savitnevich, head of the Parliamentary Defense Committee. The invasion of Kursk has not prompted Putin to redeploy his better-trained assault forces from Donetsk. That goal was not achieved, Ukrainian Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief Alexander Sirsky acknowledged earlier this month. But he claimed the Russians were deprived of the opportunity to maneuver their units and prevented from sending additional forces to Pokrovsk. The host of the state propaganda channel, Russia24, blurted out on camera about the crime of the Russian armed forces in Ukraine. Speaking about the offensive in the Kurokovsk direction, the presenter spoke quite frankly about the favorite tactic of the Russian army, which consists of raising the cities and villages of Ukraine to dust. And here is footage from the South Donetsk front. The crews of the Tulip Mortar destroyed another populated area, the propagandist declared cheerfully. Realizing that he had said something wrong, the RF presenter froze for a few seconds with a frightened face, after which he tried to correct himself. He specified that the Ukrainian Armed Forces point had been destroyed. Recall, for the millions of people affected by the conflict, it has been 2.7 years of immense suffering, in particular for those belonging to vulnerable groups such as women, children, older persons, and persons with disabilities. The conflict has also had a devastating impact on men, given that those eligible for military service are forbidden from leaving the country. The conflict in Ukraine dates back to 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. This led to tensions and eventual conflicts in the Ukrainian regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, where pro-Russian armed groups have sought control. On the 24th of February 2022, Russia launched a full land, sea and air invasion of Ukraine. Russia's invasion was in violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and the UN Charter, which prohibits such acts. As the conflict continues in Ukraine's east and south, where fighting on the front lines remains intense, with a significant increase in Russian attacks. 
In areas under their control, the Russian armed forces have been accused of willful killing, summary executions, rape and other forms of sexual violence, the use of torture in a widespread and systematic way in detention facilities, as well as unlawful transfer and or deportation of Ukrainian children to Russia or areas under their control in Ukraine. Incidents of torture and ill treatment against Russian soldiers and prisoners of war by Ukrainian forces have also been reported. International human rights law forbid murder and summary executions and require the humane treatment of persons in the power of the enemy. All acts of torture, rape and other forms of sexual violence against women and girls as well as men and boys are prohibited.